The final step for this scene is of course to create some materials, set some colors and create a beautiful lighting that would elevate this kind of stylized scene. And I've prepared a color palette for you that we can load up in the image editor and pick colors right from there. You can go right here into the corner until the cursor changes to the cross and then drag up to create another window and we can click here and switch this to image editor. And now only thing is to click open and navigate to the file. You can find the file in the description, just download it somewhere and load it up here in the image editor. And now we can freely zoom in and out. So these are the colors I've picked from the project when I was preparing it, but I want to stop for a while. And before we actually start creating the materials and setting these colors, I want to talk about this a little bit because simply by repeating what I do on the screen, um, you won't learn as much as if we dive a little deeper and I explain the thoughts behind my process and the process behind setting the colors for the scene and finding the right lighting is never linear. So even though I can structure these lessons in a linear way, so you get the desired result in the end, my process before that when I'm preparing the scene is never linear, you know, there's always some trial and error phase. And that's what I want to talk about right now. And when you're thinking about colors, one thing is actual colors that you set in your materials. And the other things are perceived colors where the brain bias is actually taken into account. So sometimes when you look at some object and you know that the object is red, you know, your brain perceives it as red, but under different light conditions, the real color that you're seeing is actually a little bit different but it's hard sometimes to overcome that bias. And when you're creating a realistic scene, you know, and you know that there is an object that's red, you just set the color to red, and then you move on and create some realistic environment lighting and realistic lights, and you'll get your realistic result. But here, when you're creating an illustration that serves some particular purpose, and you have some idea about how the colors should look and this might have something to do with the brand you are creating illustration for where you need to match certain look and feel it's not enough just to pick colors and then move to light so i always go back and forth with these two so basically i start by setting some basic colors that i think that would look good and then proceed with some lighting setup and go back to those colors and adjust them and of course, in all of this, environment color plays a huge role too. So there are several places that I go and tweak the settings for the lights and colors and then go back to the other ones and adjust them as well until I get the result that I want. So as a first step, we can use these colors from the palette and apply them as they are. So let's hold Z and switch to the material preview and we can start creating the materials. So let's select the ground object and I will switch to the material tab here, create a new material, let's call this ground and let's click the color. Let's click the eyedropper tool and pick the ground color from the palette. And additionally, I want to adjust the roughness of this. So let's set the roughness all the way to one. Then we can select the grass object, create a new material. Let's call this grass. And again, we'll pick the color from the palette. And here I want to go one for the roughness as well and here we can apply the same material to this object as well and now we can select one of these cubes in the tree let's create a new material let's call this tree and let's pick the color from the palette and i want this yellow color here near the grass so let's pick that one this will give the scene a little bit of that autumn or late summer feel and I want to apply same material to the bush here. So let's apply that one as well. And here we can modify the roughness to something like 0 0.7. Um, I want this to have a little bit of the reflection. And we can now proceed and select one of these rocks, create a new material. Let's call this rock. And let's pick the color from the palette. And we can set the same material for the pathway as well. So let's pick the rock and for the styles like this but the bridge I want it to be a little bit brighter so let's select the bridge 
and let's create the rock material let's call this rock 2 and let's pick the lighter rock color from the palette here and this will give us that nice contrast between those tiles and the bridge and we can give some darker material um, to this bottom of the railing so let's pick the rock here and we can now move on and create other materials so here I want to create a wood material that'll be a little bit red so let's create a new material let's call this wood and let's pick the color from the palette and at first I didn't have this as a red color um, but while adjusting the lighting and the colors in the scene I've ended up um, with this kind of color for these wooden bars and then I ended up applying them to the trees as well um, it doesn't have to be realistic and these colors complemented nicely so I wanted to keep that restricted palette and use them for the tree as well so let's just do that and apply the same color here it will look interesting and again this will further bring the scene away from the realism and more into the stylized illustration and now we can select the top of the railing create a new material let's call this wood 2 so basically this will be some kind of painted wood um, that's on the bridge there and we can pick the blue color here from the palette and now we can select the lamp and I want to give a little bit of the metallic feel here so let's create a new material let's call this metal and let's pick the metal color here and we want to bring the metallic value all the way up and set the roughness to 0 0.7 so it's not that shiny and apply the same material um, to the bench here to those curves and let's pick the bench itself and let's choose that wood color here and the last thing um, are these grass strains so let's apply the same yellow material there as well and we can now create the water material so let's create the water let's pick the color and apply that one and here we want to go 0 0.1 on a roughness we want this to be a little bit more shiny we want that water reflections there on the displacement to be visible but I won't give this any transmission or any like realistic attributes this will be plain color material with some reflections so no transmission no translucency whatsoever and one last thing to do is to select the background and create the background material and let's pick the color there and these are the colors and by themselves they already look quite good and if you inspect them there is some nice complementary color palette playing here um, you have that lime green with the violet these two colors always play together very nicely and create really playful and vibrant combination and the rest of the colors just complete um, the color circle you can see the color basically from every spectrum um, you have the blues the yellows here so the goal here was to create a really colorful um, composition and now we can proceed with some lighting so first of all let's go to the render settings here and while still in the EV render settings we will enable ambient occlusion for those cavities and a little bit of the bloom and screen space reflections that will already make the scene really nice and now we'll add some lights so let's go here and switch the scene lights and scene world this will make the scene very dark um, but we can create one other material that will help to light up the scene a little bit that's emission light on those lampposts so let's select one of them go to the material settings and create a new material slot let's tab in and if you don't have that ring selected go to the face select by pressing 3 alt click here to select the loop and assign this new material we can now tab out and let's create a new material there let's switch these to emission and let's set the strength to something like 20 so it's really strong and we can click the color and pick the color from the palette down here for some of that yellow light and now we can go on and create some actual lights I want the lighting to be very simple I really want this color to pop out you can see I've ramped up the roughness for these materials so there is not much of a reflection going on 
we really want those colors to shine to pop out and we want this to have almost like a flat feel to it so i will use some light that will shine from the top and actually throw re really soft light around all of the scene and i will use area light for that so press shift a create a new light and let's click area light and we'll bring this up so let's press g then z and move this up something like 13 so it's really high up and now we can set the size of the light here to 5 so it's really large and switch the shape to disk so this will give that really consistent and dispersed light all over the scene and we can ramp up the color to something like 1000 and now you see what I'm talking about. This has almost like a game-like, really flat game-like feel, like you could see on the Super Mario or something like that. And I really like this so far, but it looks a little bit bleak, like the colors aren't going through as much as I wanted. So we can try to tone the scene with a little bit of that light. So let's pick some color and we can try searching for some warm light and you can already see how the colors change when you choose something a little bit warmer and this will blend them a little bit together it's still a little bit bleak but that has more to do with the exposure and the intensity of the lights rather than the color itself so i think i really like something like this and now the second thing i like to do when i set this main light that will define the color i like to go and blend it more together with some environment light so if you switch to the world settings here and pick some color i always go a little bit blue and violet i think it can complement those warm lights very nicely so let's pick something like that and we can go a little bit more on the value here and you will see how this fills the shadows with the violet light a little bit more and how it blends it all together but doesn't distort the lights that much because if you have a really strong warm light coming from the top that will basically override that color on those objects so you will end up with those nice blended shadows there and now if i'm not satisfied with the colors i can always go back to the materials and modify them or i can go and modify the light itself so it's always this balancing act between picking the right environment color picking the right color for the lights and their intensity and then tweaking the colors of the materials to get the result you really want and there's a fourth thing that comes into play and that's overall contrast and exposure maybe as you already know you can go to the render settings scroll down and find the color management options here and if you switch the contrast look to something like medium high contrast or even high contrast this will change the look of your scene um, quite a lot and i want to go for high contrast because i really want this to be vibrant i really want those colors to shine and you can already see how this higher contrast helps with that and we can now play with the exposure and bring it up so we have a little bit more of the brightness and more of this color vibrance in the scene so let's go all the way up to 1.5 and this is what i was talking about like you can see right now the vibrant colors the strong green and these yellows and all those four things i was talking about play together really nicely to get this result so this is my process basically now i would maybe go back into the materials try to modify a little bit that hue and saturation on some of the objects to get the palette that i really want or maybe i could go to the world settings so this is the place where you really start to play with your light settings and your materials and basically you can and i strongly encourage you to create multiple versions of the file and try different versions of lighting and materials to really get the best possible result that you can get so as you can see this is not a linear thing um, it's very easy to create a lesson in a way that you pick colors for the materials and then adjust the lighting as i say but here i want to encourage you to experiment to try this yourself and this will of course help you in the next episodes to better understand my decision making behind those colors and those lights because there we won't have um, as much time to go over all of the lighting and material decision choice but i really hope this experimentation will help you to better understand those steps and make better decisions on your own and there's one last thing i'd like to do right now and that's to create another light 
and I want some of the backlight to create a little bit more of those reflections. I think the water could benefit from some reflections. So let's now just select this light right here and we'll duplicate it. I will press Shift D then enter. And now I will hold period on the keyboard to switch to the 3D cursor or you can do it right here. And then press R, X and rotate 45 degrees minus. So it goes in the opposite direction. And now R, Z to rotate on the Z axis 45 degrees again and confirm. And we can additionally bring it down on Z. So this is purely optional. Whatever works better for you, you can see how those reflections change on the water there. So something like this. And I want to set the color to white. So let's go to the object data properties, click the color and we'll reduce the hue, the saturation and leave the value all the way to one. So it's a white light. I don't want, I don't want to mix the colors anymore. I'm really satisfied with the colors, how they look right now. I just want to introduce some of those reflections and a little bit of the gradient on the background as well. A little bit of those reflections on the trees and on the water as well. So yeah, just play with the position of this light on the Z axis. So you get something you really like. And now just to be sure that you're getting the result you were promised, you can go on and pick the colors that I've introduced here in this palette. So I will just finish up using this palette here and first I'll go to the world properties and pick the environment color from here you can see this is a little bit brighter that I actually end up with and it didn't really look that much different but in the end um, sometimes a little bit of the lightness can make all the change in the scene so really it's very iterative process where you go over the settings over and over again till you end up with something you like and now I will switch the color of this main light as well. So let me pick the color from the palette as well. That will be this one here. Okay, so this is our scene now. Now we can press Ctrl B to limit the rendering for the camera view only. And let's go to the render settings and let's switch this to cycles. And I will switch this to GPU. Enable adaptive sampling. That's a really great new features in Blender 2.9 um, to really do more samples only in places where you need to. And I will increase these samples to 512. And now we have this great new tab with denoising. Uh, we can enable viewport denoising. If you have the RTX card, you can pick optics, image denoise that will give you instantaneous real-time rendering. So let's hold Z and do a render preview right now. And this is what we end up with. You can see it's a little bit different than with the EV. And I think it's mostly due to that bloom activated there. So if you go to the EV and disable bloom, it will not be so bright there. And now let's go back to the cycles and the render preview. So we end up with a really strong and vibrant color, beautiful contrast, nice color palette. And the only thing left to do right now is to enable render denoising as well and switch to something you like. You can switch to optics if you have RTX card. I really recommend Open Image Denoise. That's CPU-based AI denoiser from Intel. Um, it gives great results in my opinion. So I most of the time use that one. And one last option I want to modify here is in the performance tab. If you're rendering using GPU, I strongly recommend to increase the size of the tiles. Now we can switch to the rendering tab and hit that F12 and wait for the result. Okay, so this is your finished scene. Nice, colorful, vibrant, stylized illustration. I really hope that you like it and you enjoyed um, this episode. This serves mostly as a getting up to speed episode where we went through all of these techniques that I use very often in my scenes, whether these are some of these mesh modeling tools or modifiers. So you should be now really prepared for what's coming up. Um, there's plenty. So congratulations on finishing this one and see you on the next episode.